Now, on this program in the past, we've exposed how the Me Too movement in Australia promised much but delivered little. Activist Tracy Spicer promised a tsunami of sexual assaults and predators would be exposed, but it didn't eventuate. Actor John Jarrett was one who was charged but acquitted. Freedom! <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> Freedom! Another actor, Geoffrey Rush, uh, won a defamation action against the Daily Telegraph. And yet another actor, Craig McLaughlin, faced charges and was acquitted. McLaughlin shared his experiences in a major documentary aired on Channel 7 last weekend. This is what I struggle with. I was public enemy number one. He's been abandoned by everybody. How am I going to survive this? I was admitted into a mental health facility. I contemplated the unthinkable. My family would be better off without me. They got everything they wanted. The actor's trauma began with a trial by media when the ABC and Fairfax newspapers, now Nine Media, combined for a joint expose. And the weekend documentary aired some footage from their interviews that gave us a disturbing insight into the intent of that journalism and the coaching the journalists and producers gave to the women making allegations against McLaughlin. In this clip, there is encouragement to use the word predatory. Predatory. Do that again. Yep, okay. There's predatory in this. They knew exactly what they were doing, those journalists. They knew exactly what they were doing. Can you happy with that, Director? Yeah, that's good. That was absolutely brilliant. Awesome. Now, this material was put to air by Channel 7, intercut with reactions from McLaughlin in the here and now, listening to this stuff. Watch and listen here as one of the journalists questions the tactics, but the coaching goes on and they get what they want all the same. Looking for a sharp, short, you said this is predatory behaviour, it wasn't a one-off. And when we all shared our stories, we realised how calculated it was. I don't think we should be putting words into her mouth to an extent. That I wrote down. So essentially, the, the, what's of most concern is the power imbalance yeah. in this situation. So I think what has inhibited our action previously and, and what's concerned us the most now is, is his... No, it's not mm. that. Hang on, guys, out there. We can hear them. Okay. We're good? We're on. What is it that stops women from complaining in these circumstances, do you think? I think in our case, it's, it's their star power, it's their influence that makes us fearful, makes us feel as though our voices won't be heard. Short enough? With that? Too short. Uh, no. Maybe even just something like, you know, like, you know, he's a big star, he yes. has clout. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we wouldn't be listened to or we wouldn't think we'd be listened to. OK. OK. I guess we all felt that his star power and his influence was more valuable and more important than us. Perfect. Perfect indeed. This is a highly worrying look behind the scenes, isn't it? Are these journalists asking questions or dictating answers? The investigation had begun with journalists calling actresses involved in the Rocky Horror Show a production that starred Craig McLaughlin. And these journalists made promises from the start. They began making calls. We're contacting everyone who played this role. And making promises. You know, we've got a, a department of lawyers here at the ABC and at Fairfax, and at Fairfax that will yeah. back you all away. Yeah. And then despite all that preparation and those early promises of legal support and weeks of filming and those, shall we say, interviews, let's call them interviews, McLaughlin was only contacted at the last minute, given little time to respond before the story went to air. Yet weeks earlier, it seems the journalists' minds had been made up and the intent of the piece was made clear as they discussed the timing of when they would air the story. It's the next one. During their discussions, talk turned to the timing of when the story should run, prompting this curious comment from a senior Fairfax journalist. The thing about the timing is that if we go Thursday, 
It just means that um, Friday is Chris. Oh no, Friday. So we've got a couple of days then to do follow. the follow-up mm. because ultimately we want him out of that job. Well, they got their wish, didn't they? What a wonderful outcome for journalism, hey? Does it worry you? Me too.